There are three major ecosystems that our world is comprised of. The freshwater ecosystem, the terrestrial ecosystem, and the ocean ecosystem. Of these three, the ocean ecosystem is by far the largest, covering over 70% of the Earth's surface. Within this ecosystem, there are four major zones, the intertidal, neritic, oceanic, and abyssal. Each one of these zones holds organisms that play important roles to keep the zone balanced. For instance, within the neritic zone, you will find an abundance of life, as this is where coral reefs grow. Coral reefs cover 1% of the ocean floor, but are home to roughly 25% of the ocean's organisms, and each one plays an important role in keeping stability within their ecosystem. A key entity within a coral reef ecosystem is the sea turtle. Each different species of sea turtle impacts their ecosystem in a different way, and there are four main species of sea turtle that are found along the coast of the United States. The green sea turtle, hawksbill sea turtle, loggerhead sea turtle, and the leatherback sea turtle. Each one of these species has a main role within their ecosystem. Since the green sea turtle has the largest population among all the species of sea turtle, it plays the largest role in its ecosystem. The green sea turtle's role in its environment is to prune seagrass beds. As they are the only species that is strictly herbivorous, seagrass beds make for the perfect energy source. Green sea turtles will eat seagrass within several centimeters of the base so that in time it will be able to regrow and it doesn't completely eliminate the seagrass bed. They will also eat the older blades of grass which allows for newer, healthier blades to grow in its place, which in turn allows for continual growth of the seagrass bed. The act of grazing on the beds increases the nutrient content as the sea turtles are being both the fertilizers as well as the farmers. Without these grazers, seagrass beds would become overgrown and hence increases the chance of slime, mold, fungi, and algae to grow. Left unchecked, these plants will overrun their competitors which negatively affects the diversity of other plants. While the green sea turtle focuses on plant management, the hawksbill species prunes on sponges that reside on the coral reefs. Hawksbill sea turtles use their sharp beaks to scrape sponges off the surface of coral. When these turtles eat the sponges, they distribute pieces of the sponge across the coral reef which increases the genetic diversity of the sponges. This is important because genetic diversity increases resilience and supports healthier future generations. The removal of these sponges allows certain species of coral that build the coral reefs, called hard corals, to regrow and increase the overall structure of the reef. If hawkbill sea turtles as well as other sponge predators weren't there to control the populations of the sponges, they would overgrow on coral reefs, suffocating them and wiping them out of an entire ecosystem. Another species of sea turtle that plays a similar role in an ecosystem as the hawksbill is the loggerhead sea turtle. The loggerhead sea turtle has the most powerful beak out of all the species of sea turtle, using it to crack open the shells of crustaceans. When a crustacean dies, their shells can take thousands of years to decompose on their own, but when a loggerhead consumes a crustacean, they break down their shells into small pieces which degrade in a shorter period of time. Loggerheads also spread the nutrients of the shells to their feces, which benefits the ecosystem's nutrient levels, increasing plant growth. With increased plant growth, there's more oxygen being produced into the ecosystem, which benefits all the organisms within it. Loggerheads also feed on the surface of the ocean floor, and in doing so, they disturb the aeration and nutrition distribution of the sediment which helps to slow the growth of fungi, algae, and mold. This process is similar to the green sea turtle's process of grazing, as it is important that these possibly suffocating plants are kept in check. The leatherback sea turtle has a more direct role in maintaining another species population. The leatherback sea turtle's diet is comprised strictly of jellyfish, which corresponds with the role that they play in the ecosystem, to keep jellyfish populations stable. It is important that jellyfish numbers are kept in check, as jellyfish feed on fish, eggs, and larvae. If leatherbacks do not help to control the number of jellyfish in the ocean, there is a higher chance of jellyfish overpopulating and feasting on larger amounts of fish, eggs, and larvae, ultimately decreasing and even endangering certain species of fish. Like many organisms, sea turtles help to control the populations and distribution of other marine animals as well as to help stabilize the overall structure of their ecosystems. It is vital that the oceans do not lose these majestic creatures as they would be devastating to the overall balance of the ecosystems as well as the food chain. As humans, we have a lot of habits and practices that negatively affect the organisms around us. But fortunately, there are many who are trying to spread awareness of the creatures on this planet and why they are so vital to the future of our world.